Basement family, we have a fun review for y'all today. We have a little combo review to do, and we've got a combo 3000 watt giveaway as well, thanks to Big Def Audio, so stay tuned for that. YouTube, thank you all so, so much for checking in and hope y'all are ready for Christmas. Today, we're gonna be reviewing the Trinity Audio TAS-M15, paired with the TAS-3000.1. And I gotta give a huge shout out to Big Jeff Audio for sending me these products, one, to make a review for y'all. Two, after this video, we're gonna be giving this combo away, so that is super awesome, guys. Super stoked for that. To be entered for this giveaway, both of these, you just gotta go Follow my Facebook page and Big Jeff Audio's Facebook page. So please go do that, guys. Really, really appreciate it. Cannot wait to send this awesome combo out to one of y'all. All right, guys. So Big Jeff sent me a ton of stuff to give away to y'all. Now, sorry it's raining. I'm sure you can hear that, but I'm going to have to work through it. Of course, we're giving away the Trinity Audio stuff. So we got the amp. So we're going to fill this box up with other stuff as well for the winner. Let's see, Trevor, what should we start with for them? Um, you know, one of these cool DS-18 cups. These are pretty sweet. Oh, That's yeah. That's pretty neat. That's pretty cool. I definitely like the hat and the hoodies for sure. Because, you know, everybody wants them a good hoodie. Let's stick one of those in there. That'll fit. Uh, I think that's candy. Might as well throw that in there. Uh, I think you're right. Let's see. Okay, should we give them... Black Diamond shirt or a Big Jeff Audio shirt? Hmm. Oh, I like the red on that one. Okay. Black Diamond hoodie. That thing's pretty sweet. There you go. Okay, we're already kind of filling it up here. I think we can cram that shirt down in there. We got tons of cups. We got to give them a cup. You're gonna get you're gonna get cups, guys. <laughs> no, we're just gonna throw in two of these as well. Look at that. Big Jeff Audio. It looks like a perfect beer cup. I know, right? <laughs> Here, I think they need a banner. Oh yeah. That'd this, look awesome hanging in somebody's garage. This massive excess power. This thing is huge. That'll be pretty sweet. Well, let's see. Put that down in there. Give him a mug. Your coffee mug. Gotta do something with those. Yes, sir. Uh, let's see. We got some cool mm, that's a hard choice we got right some there. Cool hats right here. Only got one of these left, so I think I'm gonna throw in one of the black diamond hats. All right, guys. I think that's a pretty full little setup right there. Of course, remember to give Big Jeff Audio a huge thank you for sending this stuff uh, for me to send out to y'all. That is really, really super nice of him. Oh yeah, guys. That's pretty cool. First off, guys, let's start off with the amp. Really really quickly this amp looks pretty cool this is of course a full bridge amp what is neat about this this is basically a tar amps smart three except just much nicer build quality let's check this thing out we of course have our user manual here are the specs for all their different models this is of course what we are working with here at four ohms we have 1500 watts and this is a smart amplifier so at two ohms and one ohm we have three thousand watts that is awesome and they say that is rated within 0.02 percent thd pickup the response is 10 hertz to 20 kilohertz or 20,000 hertz signal so noise ratio 94 db sensitivity 0.4 to 3.6 volts and there are the dimensions right there of course for a 3000 watt amp this thing is absolutely tiny it sends you your allen keys and some mounting screws all right, guys, here's the amp. Again, I have pretty small hands, and you can see this thing is quite small. Starting up top, we have a heat sink up here. Okay, over here, we have our input, remote, and ground wire. Now, this looks to be bigger than 4-gauge, but it looks to be 2-gauge or regular 0-gauge. Probably not oversized 0-gauge wire, so that is a bummer. But hey, is what it is. Should be fine for what we got to do. We have our fan over here, which is a smart cooler, so it should adjust as the amp gets hotter. That's nice. You don't have to hear that whining fan 
full blast all the time. Over on this side, this is really nice, guys. We have Tiffany style RCA connectors. Your traditional tar amps does not have Tiffany style connectors, and they have all plastic buttons. The thing with these is they they can get loose and wiggle and you could break them off. Whereas when you have Tiffany style connectors, guys, they're basically bolted on there on the front and on the back. That makes these super, super secure. So they're not just gonna bust off on you. Also looks like we have some sort of metal or aluminum knobs on this thing. That is a nice touch as well. And they don't stick out, so you don't gotta worry about something hitting them and busting them off. We have a power protect and clip light. And then over here, we have our speaker outputs and they do give us four, which is nice, even though this is of course is a uh, mono amplifier. And then here's the back. Let's pop this back off just so you can see what the insides look like. Now, of course, popping the back off does void your warranty. So just beware of that. Definitely would not do this on your own. Here's the inside, of course, again, I am not a special specialist in amps whatsoever, but at least this gives you an idea of what they got going on in there. I'm sure a lot of y'all probably know more than me, so let me know what you think of these internals. Next up, let's check out this box. Uh, overall, first off, the box, very nicely taped up. No big damage issues. What I really, really, really like about this, we have one, two, three boxes protecting this sub. Now you've seen some of my other videos with a particular thousand dollar sub that I bought that was literally packaged inside just one box and that box was beat all the crap. So nice to see a company at least trying to protect their awesome products that they are sending to you. You get a Trinity Audio decal. And here is the specs sheet. They of course have the different specs for different models. You of course have the uh, TAS M15 D2. For a ported box, it wants something 3.18 cubic feet tuned to about 30 hertz. Here are all the regular specs for all the models. We, of course, are over here. The sensitivity is 89.4 dB. That is a pretty good sensitivity. Of course, we're the dual 2 ohm. And that being said, the 1 ohm version she has a really good sensitivity at 92.3. We have a three inch coil. This is 2000 watts RMS, 6000 watts max. We have one inch of uh, X max. That is of course one direction. Frequency response is 27.2. That's nice. We have a decently low frequency response. This thing has a 650 ounce motor guys. That is absolutely huge. And the displacement is 0.36 cubic feet. Here is the sub, and just wanted to give y'all a comparison to, of course, the American Base X Max, which is a monster of a sub. This being a 15, I know in video, makes it look like it's not as massive, but when you put it next to a really big 12 uh, inch sub, you really can just see how large this thing is. Starting out with, we have a very, very stiff dust cap. You can see there is plenty of glue. We have this huge mega roll surround and like again video is not going to do it justice guys but this thing is massive it is double stitched of course have our rubber gasket we have a very very sturdy basket on this thing this is really really thick material here so very very strong that is nice don't have to worry about your basket cracking and here is the spider we have a nice soft spider really helps out with that sensitivity. This sub should sound really great and not need a ton of power to sound good. And it should uh, perform with the lows pretty well. Also, that being said, still a tough sub, still should take the power should we need it. Moving over to here, we have big four gauge leads. If you look right there, there's a little bit of a burn mark. That means they have hooked this thing up to test it. So that is nice to see. They didn't just assemble this, th throw it in a box and send it on its way. Moving up to here, we do have glue around here. We then have two tinsel leads per coil running to the coil. That looks decent, pretty standard for a 2000 watt RMS sub. Of course, you can see the glue up in there. And then here is that three inch coil with the 
a black high heat glue on it as well. Overall, very nice looking. Of course, we have plenty of venting. Coming down to here, we have this big old 650 ounce motor. Again, it's not gonna look big on video just because this is a 15 and the basket is so big. But if this motor was on a 12 inch sub, you'd really be able to tell just how big this thing is. But very, very neat. We have the Trinity logo on there, but nothing else. Y'all, this is a cool sub. It would look absolutely awesome inverted if you wanted to. Very, very clean over here. But also, if you want to mount it regularly to see this ridiculous mega roll surround on this thing, you could do that as well. I know video won't do this mega roll surround justice, but here is just for a comparison. Here's an old Dark Audio DKI. This kind of got more so of your standard mega roll surround. If we look at it there, you've got about one and a quarter inches tall and about one and a half inches wide. Coming over to this thing, guys, we've got one and three quarter inches tall and about two inches wide. Again, guys, this uh, surround is just massive on this thing. All right, I'm getting the amp hooked up. Again, the one thing about this, these are pretty small for a 3K amp. Fortunately, I have these wires that already have some sky high zero to four gauge reducers on them. So this will work. We'll be able to do this. But again, if it was me, I would love to see zero gauge on these things. Okay, these sky high four gauge reducers really fit in there just perfectly. So really, really thankful that I had those. I love 15s so much. This thing has the entire truck flexing, even the bed back there. Wow, guys. fun guys next let's do the db test i know y'all want to see how loud we can get this set up two things to mention one of course we are limited on my 3000 watt amp normally i do this test with a 8000 watt amp so we really push the thing to the absolute max so 
Not gonna quite be able to do that here. Two, as you can see, we are metering on glass, not in the kick, just something else to take into account. Generally speaking, you do get a louder score in the kick than you do on the glass. All right, we're gonna do 35, 40, and 45 hertz. Run them at a couple different volumes. See how loud we can get this thing. All right, guys, starting at 35 hertz. 2,177 watts. And look at that, guys, a 139.4. 40 hertz. 2,221 watts. And a 137.1. 45 hertz. Okay, 2,928 watts. But only a 133.8. We're gonna give another shot at 35 hertz. There we go, guys. We got that 3,000 watt setup. Again, not a ton of power compared to what I normally do. Still able to break into the 140s. Again, guys, I can't stress this, this enough. I'm only on a 3,000 watt amp, and after rise, we were only getting to about 2,200 watts or so. And hey, we still were able to squeeze out, again, a 140. Not bad at all. As I said, I love 15s. The difference between a 15 and a 12 when you're at least comparing apples to apples with the same sort of sub. 15 just does so much better in my opinion yeah so hey the amp did pretty good you'll see in some of those clips i mean we were rising to three four or five even close to six ohms and still was putting out 1500 to 2800 watts didn't really see it pick up quite to 3000 but again we were well above the two ohms again remember this amp is 3000 watts at one ohm and two ohms which is wild most of your 3,000 watt amps are just at 1 ohm, so by the time you rise up to 2 and 3 ohms, I mean, you're lucky if you're seeing 1,500 watts. So, one, it is a big old sub with a big old motor, big old surround, has a ton of excursion, as you've seen in some of the, the, the slow-mos, but it is really, really soft. It's a really, really nice efficiency on it, which you can really tell, guys, this thing sounds good at lower powers and at the lower fre frequencies, really just the whole range. It sounds really, really good. This is a sub I would love just to keep in this truck for a daily banger. I would be so happy with it. That being said, I got to give it away to y'all, so unfortunately you won't be able to do that. But hey, if I could, this would be the sub I would keep in here, especially out of most of the stuff that I have at the moment. That being said, hey, it sounds good lower, but it takes the power up higher. Definitely takes the power to that 2,000 watts like it's rated for. So overall, super stoked on this thing, guys.